I hold in my hand uh, two homogeneous mixtures. This is the vodka, uh, ethanol and water, and this is uh, water from the East River that you saw behind me, a mixture of water and not really sure what else. So since they're homogeneous mixtures, their properties are uniform. Cheers! Unlike all of your essays, I didn't want to start with a Webster's definition of an element is. Okay, the IB definition is a, a substance that cannot be broken down by chemical means into simpler substances. I don't like that definition because you can use chemistry to pull off protons and electrons. You know, protons are the acidic particle, but that's the IB's preferred definition. Uh, I like this definition, a substance composed of atoms having an identical number of protons in each nucleus. The IB has never asked this question to my memory because they know there are problems with, that, with the definition for element. See how the element's made of those tiny dots? Well, the smallest part of an element is an atom, and it comes from the Greek and Latin atomus, uncuttable. All right, there's some elements there. They have symbols, one, two, or three letters. Bacon. Hold on, I'm vegetarian. Uh, elements. If you combine elements together, you make a compound. So here's the definition of a compound. It's two or more elements chemically bonded together. Two or more elements chemically bonded together. So just learn that. Some examples, we have carbon dioxide, hydrogen cyanide, water, but not O2, not oxygen. That's not two different elements, is it? It's, it's the same element, it's not two or more elements. It's just one element, oxygen. Let's look at sodium chloride, that's a compound. Sodium's terrifying, it has a health Three out of four, that's terrifying. It doesn't get much higher than that in a high school laboratory. Medical attention, more medical attention. Don't induce vomiting because it burns on the way up, causes swelling and you suffocate. Obtain, obtain advice on use of water on the fire, yeah. Be pretty brave to spray water on sodium. Chlorine, look, that's the Geneva Protocol, the Geneva Convention on Chemical Weapons. Chlorine, terrible stuff. Oh, just changed the Skrillex there. So how can sodium chloride be fine? You need sodium chloride to live. Oh, well, that's chemistry, isn't it? For finding out that the, uh, the molecules and the compounds have different properties to their constituent elements. That's what you're going to spend the next two years finding out about. So mixtures contain more than one element and or compound and are not chemically bonded together and retain their individual properties. That's the IB definition. There's four mixtures. Air is oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide. Amalgam, well, that's uh, the fillings in your teeth. That's got silver, mercury, copper, and tin. Salt water, well, yep. And vodka is ethanol and water. Now, those mixtures share another property in the fact that they are homogeneous mixtures. So homo means same. And they have uniform properties, which means that if you were to take a sample from anywhere in that mixture, it would have the same properties. So there must be heterogeneous mixtures as well. So hetero means other. I like to think of it as meaning different, but uh, it's other. Non-uniform properties. So let's take the classic example of salt and sand. So if you were to look closer, Depending on where you take your sample, you're going to have a different ratio of salt to sand. See, there's more sand than salt in the second one. Okay, oil and water is another heterogeneous mixture. Even if you shake it up, they'll still separate themselves out into their constituents. So why shouldn't you put water and oil? This is just a little sidebar here. Water is denser than oil. So when you put it in, it will sink to the bottom. Oil can be at about 200, 250 degrees C, but the water will get a thousand times bigger because of course water boils at 100 degrees C. So that water droplet gets a thousand times bigger because it instantly boils, shoots the oil out everywhere and catches fire. Another mixture is iron and sulfur. Maybe your teacher's shown you that and made iron sulfide, fool's gold. Separating mixtures. Okay, so these are the techniques mentioned in the syllabus. First of all, grab a magnet, and that will remove uh, yeah, the magnetic stuff, almost certainly iron. Next up, why not dissolve the components of your mixture? 
into, let's say, water. X, well, that might be polystyrene, so that's floated up. We can remove that. And I, maybe that dissolves into the water. Okay. So how can I separate out I? That's it, the filter funnel and some filter paper. Pour the mixture in. I and the water will go through, retaining the insoluble chemicals. Then the question is, how do you get the I out? Uh, just uh, evaporate off the water, and that will give you the I. That leaves us with these five. So let's do paper chromatography. Stick the chemicals onto a piece of paper, and then dip that into a shallow pool of, well, not water. Water wouldn't work with it. It didn't work before. Let's put it into, say, methanol. And so as the solvent moves up the paper, it drags some of the chemicals with it. In this case, uh, E is very soluble in the solvent methanol, and M is just a little soluble. All right, so how do I get those chemicals out? Just cut them out. Dry them off, and you've got those. S, U, and R, let's use distillation. Now, more detail on this comes up in the organic chemistry section. So put the chemicals into the bottom of that flask there. And as you increase the temperature, the chemicals will go up and down the neck of that fractionating column there. The one with the lowest boiling point will go the furthest up the tube, and eventually it will go up so far, in this case S, it will go down the side arm and you can collect it in the beaker. Keep on heating, and the less volatile chemical will eventually make it to the top, U. There we go. And R, well that has a, such a low volatility that it's never going to make it out. And you've just kept it in the original flask.